Hello everybody, welcome to Fluent Friday. As always, I hope you're tuning in. Facebook is just telling me this is my 10th broadcast, 10th time talking to you guys. And as always, thank you so much for tuning in. This live video is designed to help you learn languages, get yourself organized, get into that routine. We've got a bit of sunshine going up here and just in case you hadn't noticed, I've turned myself into a manga character. <laughs> so you are the first fluent audience members to see my new hair color. It's the little things in life. All right, but today, like I said, I'm going to talk about tracking. As always, please leave a comment, say hello down there. Facebook Live is, an, is a system that sometimes shows me your comments and sometimes doesn't, so I've yet to work out what to do about that and at the end of today's video I'm also going to give you a sneak preview of what's over there <laughs> so stay tuned but first let's talk about tracking and about the idea of the language learning routine now language learning routines there's a reason these are so important to us and the way our routine works and that is because you, if you're watching this, if you're currently learning a language, are very, very likely, to some extent, a self-taught language learner. You're a self, self-studying, self independent language learner, which means, by which I'm trying to say, you don't go to class, you might not be in full-time education. Language is something that you do for the love, perhaps because you've got family and friends, because you love travel, and it's a challenge to yourself. You want to live your life in other languages. And this is an amazing and exciting topic. Languages are such an intrinsic human skill that I don't think we should we should ever you know make apologies for learning another language there needs to be you know when people ask you why are you learning that one people ask me why are you learning Welsh and I genuinely believe that if you've got an interest and you're able to even make a little bit of time and you're feeling motivated you are going to be so enriched by this that there is simply never a reason not to do it so if you are this sort of independent self-motivated language learner one of the big issues that many of, of you guys I know run into, and that I sometimes run into, is how do we know we're making progress? How do we know we're doing well? And how do we really know what to do? Now, I've previously talked to, re to you about vision goals and path goals. So the vision goal is your big motivation, where you see yourself being, how you see yourself feeling about your language. And I will get back to these in a very shortly in a future broadcast and I've also talked to you about path goals which is when you've got smaller goals that kind of just guide you a little bit along the way so you know what to do and this is this leads me on to my first point about tracking before I even go into what a good language learning routine could look like or could be tracked like I want to tell you this if you track in any way you should do goals too, right? It's no, you, you need to know if you're gonna look, it's the same as doing, imagine you have a lemonade stand, you're selling all your lemonade, and at the end of the day you think, oh my God, I've done really well, I've sold three lemonades. This could be great, because you've got a number that you're evaluating yourself against. Or you could say, I've done really well, I spent five hours standing here, but nobody bought, and the problem with those kind of metrics, for lack of a better word, for all that data that we're giving ourselves through tracking, is we need to know if that data is actually get showing us that something is going well. So I think if you're tracking, you need to set yourself goals too, because you need to know if all of that tracking tells you you're going towards the goal or you are going all the way the other way. And here, just one little point about language learning that is always great. Um, you can't go backwards. You can't go backwards. The more you put yourself in contact with your target language, the more you are around it, the, the more progress you're going to make. But if you don't study, and if your routine doesn't involve the right type of study, your progress is going to be so minuscule that you never reach the end. 
Another advantage of tracking is that you simply will know when something isn't working. So if you sit yourself down in front of the radio and listen to a broadcast in, say, Vietnamese for an hour every single day and you never do anything else, and after about four weeks you still can't say anything in Vietnamese, but you've tracked it, so you know you've done something and it hasn't even brought you anywhere near your goal, what that tells you is that doesn't work and you need to change what you're doing. So tracking is also important because number one, it tells you what isn't working. Number two, it gives you some data that tells you have you been doing something to move you towards your goal and then when you're looking at whether you've achieved your goal you can look back and see what you actually did and number three it is a motivator in itself because many people really like the idea of developing a streak of doing something regularly over the period of time and I'm a fan of this I want to motivate you to make foreign language learning to make languages your habit right so we're here we're, we're trying to develop the language habit and if you're trying to develop the language habit what better way to do it than to make yourself a little note of what you do every day that is the whole philosophy of tracking now a big question that people ask regularly that I have seen is what counts and what's really effective and there is an extent to which I'm going to say it's independent to you. Same as when I did the vocab video I said to you there are standards of what works because people, brains, all kind of work in the same way but there are people who have different preferences and some things work better for some people than for others so don't take any of this as gospel, but what I'm going to talk you through is four different types of tracking, four different types of study, apologies, um, how to track them and what signifies those. And they go from the highest level of intensity to the low, lowest level of intensity. So with that, we would expect that the highest level of intensity in your study period is going to reap the highest rewards but that's the one that kind of demands the most of you that demands like actual focus sitting down and not doing anything else so it's kind of up to you and again this is where tracking comes in and tracking whether you have intensively studied you've had a big session or a little session uh, it's kind of up to you to make sure you maintain a balance and you cover all of your areas same as with core skills. We've previously talked about core skills, listening, reading, speaking and writing. And with those four core skills, you're only going to really make progress in languages if you've covered all four of those. If you're only ever speaking your target language, your, your spelling, kind of your grammar, and therefore your memory isn't going to be up to speed, for example. So let's get into the four different types or intensity grades of study as established by Dr. Kirsten Cable. I'm not a doctor. Number one is what people often refer to as deliberate practice. Deliberate practice is um, a an expression that I have seen used for example in the book Deep Work by Cal Newport which comes up with this really interesting concept of focusing on one specific thing that you're doing and working on it really deeply um, and therefore reaping higher rewards and it's also used by Malcolm Gladwell when he talks about his 10,000 hour rule and I really like the principle the message behind that 10,000 hour rule which is Nobody's really born with a genius, brilliance and talent for anything that that means nobody really lacks this brilliance and talent. That means you don't lack the brilliance and talent and you just got to put your mind to it. But science has kind of, you know, looked at that rule. So don't don't make it your gospel. But deliberate practice then is a way of studying that takes into account what it is you're really trying to do and that works intensively. So I think this is mostly identified by focus. You've got to focus on what you're doing. So switch your phone off, switch your television off, 
don't don't even think about doing anything else and also in language learning i believe deliberate practice means you produce some language you speak or you write you don't just sit there and listen to the radio that is too passive in language learning you need to engage so many parts of your brain so i think the best way of doing deliberate practice in a foreign language is either to read and then read and then write a summary or to have a conversation so that means you're processing a lot that is coming in but then you're also producing language the next thing that is important about this is goal orientation so i would say deliberate practice should be something where you have for before you start you've thought about what your goal is why you're doing this and how it kind of gets you there and deliberate practice then kind of gives you a way of assessing if what you're doing is is working in the right way this this kind of way of studying it can be you know looking something up in the grammar book but i think really the highest way of processing and producing language is like i said to read and summarize or to have conversations texting strangely can be deliberate practice in your foreign language because it's like having a conversation with the added difficulty of writing so you are writing as if you were having a conversation that's why i think apps like hello talk and tandem are quite a challenge for the language learner but also quite make this deliberate practice moment quite accessible now focus so these kind of study sessions i would say tend to be a little bit longer so they're not like your five minutes on duolingo but at the same time they are they are not something that you can maintain for five hours or something like that whereas if you've just got your television on in the background in brazilian portuguese that's something you can maintain forever so the third <laughs> the third point about deliberate practice is that i believe there needs to be a follow-up so for example if you've got an hour's class with a tutor it tends to be that between half and three quarters of that will be spent in like intense deliberate practice but i think afterwards you should extend the benefits you should really make sure you reap the benefits from that by following up on the session you've just had that means doing your homework perhaps that means making sure you've noted new vocabulary words that means investigating grammatical structures you've not understood um, and in a way it means making sure you have set a date so that you know when you're doing it again and this will move you massively towards a goal so deliberate practice is focused goal oriented has a follow-up and it also addresses several core skills out of that four core skill range that i preach to you about okay now then there is that that should be the basis of your routine really you should have several sessions of that in the week i don't personally there are weeks where i only have one session that is like this and then i've got a lot of little ones around it that are sort of more maintenance ones and this before i even go like a second further i'm just going to tell you this is absolutely okay and i think that is a great way of processing i would because that's how i do it but it does mean i'm not the fastest language learner it does mean i'm not going to be level b2 in four months but that is okay with me that is the way i enjoy it and i've i have found this is sustainable so and i do track my sessions and i do set goals so point number two method number two slight less intensity still very focused and i think anything that engages you with your target language and i think in this area we've also got all that meta stuff that you gotta do where you, may, you might look up vocabulary you might be typing things into memorize where you're building your own course you might be looking up specific points in the grammar book because it just doesn't make sense or you're wondering how to say would i be able to invite you to come to the cinema with me next week right those complicated structures you might need to look those up so anything that is in an engagement with your target language here i would count just reading just speaking etc 
um, that is what I would call extra practice. So you get your deliberate practice and you get your extra practice. Um, extra practice reviewing and engagement. And I think that is entirely trackable and doesn't have to always hit like five core skills in one. And point number three is your contact time with the language. So what I usually track as a full session, a big session, is deliberate practice or extra practice. And then what I track as a kind of maybe a half, a half session or like a day where I've done something but I haven't like focused intensely on Welsh, my target language, that is what I call contact time. Contact time focuses on one core skill or just on vocabulary words where you're not building full sentences, but it keeps you in contact with the language. It can be listening to the radio, it can be reading in your language magazine and things like that. So contact time is really, really important. Not, and it's not to be dismissed, right? Because the I've I've previously talked to you about the spaced repetition curve where you learn a word, you kind of go away and then you learn it again and then you go away and then you learn it again. And what the contact time often does is remind you of the words that you have studied before. Uh, it tends to be more receptive. So your deliberate practice and your extra practice tend to involve some language production. So in that way, even Duolingo, when it makes you write a sentence, not when it's just tap this, tap this, but when it makes you write a sentence, when it's a little bit harder work, Duolingo is an extra practice tool. Or Memrise, I think, is a better extra practice tool because it makes you type more, it makes you produce more. So when you produce language, you're engaged at a higher level. When you just receive language, listening to the radio, reading, etc., um, more you're listening and reading skills. <laughs> One day I'm going to just have the core skills down. Um, those are important because they train you in processing, but they're not quite as intensive. So that's what I would call contact time. Just to recap, deliberate practice, extra practice and contact time. And finally, um, that lets me get to the question that Clay Clayton posed. Um, and this was about passive time. That's what he called it. And I kind of wrote it in my in my notes as background time and those are really the kind of times where languages are somewhere sort of in your life just somewhere around you um, but whether you would call them tracking times whether you would deliberately call them like tracking points I don't know so perhaps if you've got the radio on in the background and say you're driving and it's just on. This happened to me on Monday. I was in, I went to Ikea. Ikea is in Warrington, which is further south in Lancashire. Uh, when you go further south in Lancashire, you're so near to Wales that you actually get the Welsh radio station. So on my way home, I listened to Welsh radio. I was able to keep this up for 15 minutes and then I had to switch it off because my brain was kind of a little bit overloaded with it. But what it did for me is so at that point we're going from the area of contact time where i'm actually focusing on and trying to understand welsh we would be going from contact time to background time if i start focusing on something else and it's still sort of on so to me that is not time that i track as a language learner that is not time that i work on specifically that I think counts as language learning practice. It's certainly not deliberate practice. I'm not producing anything. But is it good? Should you do it? Absolutely. And the reason I think you should stick with it and you should do it is mostly because it's a good reminder and a good motivator and a good way of getting used to language. And I'm going to I'm going to quote um the language surfer, Ron Gullickson, uh, who sadly departed the earth last year and I, I miss him still and I miss his articles. He came on the Creative Language Learning Podcast, did an interview with me and made the argument that you should switch on the radio and, you know, like tune in radio or podcasts, etc. and just get that language around you as soon as you possibly can. And I sort of said, well, why? It doesn't really teach you anything it's just it overloads your brain you it's it's way past the level that a beginner would be at 
And Ron said, I like to make myself uncomfortable in that language as early as possible. And that's where I think background or passive contact with the language, perhaps just walking through the polo shop and just seeing the labels. He has a point, you know, there is something about that where it's it's a mixture between it motivates you to keep going and also it gets you used to what all those words look like, uh, what all those words sound like and the kind of language melodies, rhythms um, and feel of that language because I think every language has got its own little soul built into it. Um, that is background time. Like I don't personally track that. I track, like I said, my deliberate practice and my extra practice. And then I'm going to show you how I work um, with a little preview of the language habit tracker and just a quick one jade hi <laughs> thank you so much for watching i've seen your question and i'll get to you in a sec and also hi lindsay dow williams hi lindsay williams <laughs> hope you're well okay this is my first kind of preview of the printable set it's a whole set and i'm going to show you two of the sheets which are the tracking focus sheets um these are prototypes so as you've seen in the group, I'm still going to work through them with two testers before I kind of release them onto you because I want to build, I want to create something that helps you stick with your language routine. If you like tracking, if you love, you know, working with a pen and paper and tracking with printables and perhaps leaving these near your books just so you know what you've been up to. It's absolutely perfect for that. It's designed for that really. And I'm so grateful to my graphic designer that I've been working with because they're genuinely pretty. So what I do is I note these are your little kind of day boxes and I know whether I've had a big session which I would consider deliberate or extra practice or whether I've had a little session and a little session is contact time for me is really when the language has been around me or it's a day where I've had a little bit of extra practice but really it's only 10 minutes and I've just been on memorize and kind of revised what I'm doing not everything can always be like mm, intense activity sometimes you just want to listen to music and it still helps so at the end of my months usually I don't have a lot of full boxes I tend to have two or three full boxes in a week and the rest are sort of half boxes I imagine Lindsay Williams would have like box 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 but hey <laughs> and secondly so so that's kind of how how I go about tracking there is no right or wrong way of doing it but I think it is important to recognize that your language learning routine should contain some deliberate practice because if it's all just contact time you're never going to learn anything but also that you should give yourself that contact time because you need some time to process and you know build into your long-term memory what you've learned that's why spaced repetition has spaces in and it's not just repetition 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 um and here is my la, la pièce de résistance uh, the language study tracker um which is a very simple little worksheet that you work with and it's it's focused on making sure you note what core skill you have engaged with it's focused on helping you write down what exactly you did and at the bottom here we've got a little course tracker apologies for the sunshine i do not work in a studio um where you write down where you are at in your different courses, you know, whether you're doing Glossica, whether you're doing Asimil, whether you're working with something else, whatever you're working with, it tends to be that you, a lot of people set themselves the path goal of finishing the next chapter. And with these, that's a really easy way of kind of keeping track of where you are and whether you feel that you've, you know, moved on recently, because <laughs> sometimes, we feel so stuck sometimes we feel like we're getting nowhere and tracking is the way to know that you are actually doing something it's a way of making invisible progress visible and that's why i so believe in it because if you don't keep track of what you're doing you're going to start feeling like you're doing nothing you're going to start feeling like you're doing like you're getting nowhere and to be honest you're just gonna stop and who wants that so 
that was my little summary of tracking. Please, you know, leave me a comment. Tell me what you thought. Uh, tell me if you like my hair. <laughs> And finally, I'm going to get to Jade's question. So Jade says, would you say that starting to learn a language would manly be studying vocabulary? So I assume you want to say mainly, um, I hope. <laughs> or we could study manly vocabulary, which I would love that. Mainly be studying vocabulary. Starting, Jade, I don't start with vocabulary actually. I start with very very few vocabulary words and I start putting them together as early as I possibly can. So when I start to learn a language my first focus is on pronunciation. First and biggest focus. I make sure that I have a sense of how to read the words that are kind of coming at me. So before I before I even just like start and study a vocabulary list, I want to be sure I can kind of, I, I've got the 360 of how the words work, right? So that I can, I can read the language and I can pronounce the language and that is how I start. Then I tend to, I tend to kind of try the most basic sentences quite early on and then of course there's like politeness vocab so your greetings perhaps your sort of please and thank you and a little bit of small talk and stuff um that kind of comes next but i quite early on try try to work out how to say like i want you want uh, and then once i've got those structures in place then i start adding vocab but i think that is more helpful for the long term you know knowing how sentences work quite early on is more helpful than to just learning a lot of just to just learn a lot of words because if you just know a lot of words you you kind of I find it's a less creative way of going about it whereas knowing being able to say I want and having a word for having a word for dog or not having a word for dog it's easier to just point but if you lack the I want, you're forever going to just walk around and say, dog. And like, no one's gonna, no one's really gonna, there, there's no, there's less elegance in that, perhaps, of going about language. So that's how I do it. I also start with um, courses and textbooks quite early on. So I like to follow something that is pre-structured. Uh, but I don't tend to follow it in sequence. So I usually get myself the textbook and then I just pick whichever chapter looks interesting to me and I kind of go back and forth unless it's one that tells a story then I like to follow the story and that's that's how I go about learning languages I also don't speak to real people for the first three four months so I'm not somebody who challenges myself to set up early for the real life conversation the language exchanges I hold back on those until I feel confident but yeah, so first thing I do, pronunciation. It'd be interesting to hear, you know, how you started and what you went about first and where you're at now. Okay, and that is it really for the Facebook Live today. So uh, you may have seen already that I've posted in the group that for the language tracking sheet, like I said, there's two really beautiful printables right there. This is also going to come with you know, an instruction manual to guide you through setting up your own language learning routine. And finally, there are two, um, two more sheets there that are all focused on setting your own language goals, because like I said before, there's no point in tracking if you don't know what you're going towards. So you've got to set yourself some level of goal. Um, I'm looking for a beta tester or perhaps two for this product. I've got one slot already filled. You need to be able to join me on Sunday, I believe, for a live chat. Just a quick one so I can talk you through this. And then I would ask you to use the sheet for a week and then come back and tell me what worked, what didn't work and if there are any tweaks that I should be doing to it. I'm so happy to be able to develop what I do develop with people you know live and this is i'm so so grateful to you so like i said these have been a long time coming i think they've turned out really really well but it's now questions like should i go with the landscape or should i go with the portrait and i think you guys are going to help me with that because you're the ones using it and you're the people that it should work with
really ultimately and this is the way we're gonna make this into an app soon <laughs> and that's it from me thanks Jade for tuning in thanks everyone for tuning in it's been really fun and remember deliberate practice extra practice contact time background time that's your four components of language learning and you get to decide what to track but I would recommend you make a note when you track at what level your practice was at <laughs>